Hello, everybody, and welcome to a different kind of an episode here tonight. We have breaking news, fresh from the wild, uh, contributor, field reporter, uh, Jim Campbell. This is a Campbell and Connolly, Connolly and Campbell episode, the likes of which has not been before. Mr. Campbell, what happened today? What was significant about your day, sir? Uh, so I was at the Walmart in Naperville, located on 75th and 59th street and i ran i was walking through the aisles and i saw three migo superheroes do tell i will okay the first one so they were so the fine thing interesting about these was they were stayed a superman a robin and a batman right next to the medusa migo that's the one that caught my eye because i remember seeing it on You've discussed it before, and it's a very scary doll in person. They kind of creep me out. And then next to Medusa was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre figure, Leatherface, also very scary. And then there was another character, Hatchet, equally scary, especially for a Walmart. And they had blood and everything. So after that, I saw the superhero Migos. So... I'll just go through it one, two, three, which I saw. Uh, they're priced about nineteen ninety six. I believe it's the on the box. It says that little hologram it says it's the. Oh, if you can read that, it says it's the fiftieth anniversary. Yes, um, it is, and yes, it does. So you would know better, but I don't know if this was how it was. Was it packaged like this? When we were younger in the 70s, and, 80s, early now, 80s. Do I completely honestly remember from my childhood memory? Not exactly, but from watching the other promotional materials that they're doing their best to replicate the exact packaging from the early to mid 70s. So in that regard, I'll say the answer is yes. Okay. Um, it's funny. The pack. So the packaging is very compact. The thing I really liked about the packaging on the back, it's very old school. Um, so I saw these, I immediately called you up. Um, it's interesting. I don't remember collecting Migos in the seventies or early eighties, but for some reason I was looking at the Superman and that face is so familiar. Yeah. So I feel like maybe they, this was the same face maybe used for a, a Poncharella Poncharelli from Chips or something. <laughs> or, just, or at least, but but also of that era, the general right. haircut and sideburns would have yes. been similar. So at the very least, there's that similarity between them. So I thought that was just, it's funny that I don't remember it, but there's a part of me that does. So Could so you show the side of the packaging also? So this is the three other, you have Robin, and he looks very much like the boy wonder that we don't really see too often anymore. Oh, yes. Yes, he does. Batman. And then you've got Superman. Um, the only thing I can really add is that, yeah, just, um, well, on the other side, and I, they did not have these characters at the Walmart, but they... Aquaman like up top. Green, Green Arrow. Green Arrow. And Shazam. Captain Marvel. Now, it reads, it reads right. Shazam, but at the time, he might have still... Be that's a good question. At the time, was he billed as Shazam or as Captain Marvel? That That's an interesting nuance to follow up on. It's weird, too, because wasn't there a TV show? Oh, yeah, the live action Saturday morning. It ran three seasons, I think. Three? Wow. Was the main character, was the main villain the, the one from the most recent movie? So, Professor I don't know that there was a main villain as much as there was a adventure dilemma of the week. So similar to the Lou Ferrigno primetime Hulk and, and Bill Bixby, I should not leave out Bill Bixby, there wasn't so much an abomination or the leader to go against, but there was some you know, person in need or, or a person who was being victimized by an organization or an individual. So in that same kind of a way, but of course, the Captain Marvel or Shazam Saturday morning show skewed for a younger audience. Uh, so there were definitely uh, mishaps and, and uh, misadventures, and, and then they would call down the thunder, and, and uh, then he would come in and, and 
rescue whoever needed to be rescued that week. Did he have, okay, no, not, not to go on a tangent. Hey, let's go. But did he have a young, um, like a girlfriend with him? I don't and know that he necessarily had a mentor? consistent girlfriend, but then they ran it as kind of an hour show and there was guest star. So let's have a frame of reference, the bionic man and the bionic woman. There would be some guest starring or crossover episodes. So in a similar kind of a way, Shazam and Isis were two separate shows within the same hour or build back to back. And so the half hour long show of Isis uh, had overlap or some kind, sometime guest star interaction between the Shazam crew and the Isis crew. Okay. I have to look that up. Interesting. So yeah, it looks like the next batch will have Shazam, oh, Shazam, Green Arrow, and Aquaman. Uh, so that's Superman. I'll go into the next one. Please do. Please do. Okay. So the next one, again, it's, uh, so this is Robin. Very much a boy wonder. Uh, here's the side panel. It's just, everything looks like the same. It's just in a different color. Yep. Um, this reminds me so much of Batman, like the year one early, not Batman year one, but just... The particular era of early era stuff for sure. Right. What does it say? The recommended for collectors over 17 years of age. Okay. Um this one's funny because again, I I don't remember this particular face, but if you can look at it, he's got a very odd smirk. <laughs> which I don't know why. It's very like it, I don't know. It's very it, it's specific, it's unique, it's it's now, could you bring him up close again? And can we get a look at the mask? So that looks like it's an attached cloth mask. Is that, would you would you say that's what it is? Or It uh, looks like it's kind of like a leather, it's not, it's plastic. But it's matte plastic. plastic. And he's got and little eye slits. And you can see that little dimple on his face. His face to me it looks like William Defoe. <laughs> Interesting reference point for Defoe. Right. Uh, to to uh, a Burt Ward ish uh, character, and now if as the gloves are known as the oven mitts uh, of yes. of that era of plastics, so they were trying to even though current technology would allow for different things, they were replicating the technology of the era. So here are the classic oven mitt style gloves uh, on Robin. Uh, the, the, I say the colors <laughs> really I... pop. It, it it's true to form as what it was fifty years ago. They I will say they did an excellent job replicating their their old school or the the work uh, of their heyday uh, when they were in their prime do you remember i always like to try to stump you did they have a metal belt buckle back in the day that i will have zero recollection on right. so i am stumped <laughs> not the first not the last but one of the many ongoing stumpers that you'll throw me i have no recollection was the belt buckle metal or not maybe that's something Somebody could address in the comments if possible. Uh, was the belt buckle metal in the 70s? I would, but since they were trying to replicate all the details or the majority of the details, I'll, I'll go with yes, it, it must have been. That's what I was. So, once again, it has a little nice hologram that says 50th anniversary, world's greatest superheroes. All right. And the last one. This is just a little tidbit. So, Robin has an interesting logo. Was this ever his logo? Do you know? I don't think he ever had a logo. Well, he must have had some script because when it was your Batman and Robin. Right. But, so that logo that's on the box, was that Mego specific? Did it replicate something from the Super Friends cartoon? Or did it straight out appear as on a Detective Comics or, or another of the Batman product line? So... Stump me once, stump me twice. The, the stuff, you're giving me more homework to do, as always. Yeah, I just mentioned it because I know that Superman has his logo. Classic logo. It has the D still. Same for the comics, same for the movie, same for the TV show, all consistent. Robin, clearly not as well-known of a logo as Superman. The, the question stands. Mm -hmm. And the last, my favorite, the, the Batman, as I like to still call him. Oh, so this one's interesting 
Um, I really like how the yellow and the pink makes it really pop. Definitely. And, and he looks, he looks great in his box right there. That's it, as we're saying, and I'll, I'll, I'll float you the question whether I stump you or not in a minute for your early memories, but I definitely remember, uh, as did history repeat itself uh, with my son and one of the Imagine X or a couple of the Imagine X characters, that maybe a leg got broken off or something. And then that brought my memory back of, I, I had a Batman. I don't remember if it was the arm or the leg that got broken, that that as a young person inadvertently mm -hmm. I broke. And I, I clearly remember getting that talk from mom and dad about take better care of your stuff, be more cautious with your toys. We're not gonna instantly replace this, but I do remember having a very young person's longing for having a, a replacement uh, second Batman to, to the first Batman who was uh, then uh, decommissioned from service, if you will. Now, this one is definitely, it appears, I can't, it's, you'd have to take it out, but, it seems like I don't know if the mask comes off or not, but it or if that's just the way the mold is. That again. Well, let's just pile up all the stumpers and uh, and see how it all shakes out. Uh, for tonight's purposes, these guys are going to stay mint in their container in the box. So uh, we'll you know maybe we'll check on the other channels or see if people have done unboxings or or somewhere that information has to exist. But it does look kind of loose there around the cheek but overall right. it looks really well secured i've seen other historical ones that were like the hard plastic that were more of a proper helmet uh definitely had some more gap between the material and the and the sculpt of the head so uh hey we'll, we'll figure it out in due time and you said and as you said before he has the the oven mitts gloves oh yeah he's ready to bake some cookies get him a holly hobby oven and again the, the that glittery sticker Acknowledging the 50th anniversary. That's some good stuff. Yeah, so I, let me see if I can try to put them all. Let's see if I can. So we got to. There they are. There they are. I can pull back a little bit. Uh, I'll just try to do this. Well, okay. See, and, and again, the colors all together. The boxes all together, the logos all together. It maybe it's just because it's invoking happy memories of early childhood, or just maybe on its own, it's a really well well orchestrated uh, body of work, placing them together with their color combinations. But it looks looks good to me. Looks good from here. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I was very surprised. It's pretty well. I definitely hope that. The next batch, I really, I, I like to see how they're going to do Green Arrow's mittens with those. <laughs> how is he going to get the bow from the quiver to the string if he's exactly. got an oven mitt on? Cliffhanger. Stay tuned for future resolutions of these questions. And Whoa. again, the the black trunks era era Aquaman. So eventually, uh, Aquaman yeah. went with just the orange and and green. But there was definitely a long stretch in in Aquaman's history. Where he had the black trunks uh, as well, and did you know it's funny? What's the situation with Aquaman's calves? Does he have fins on his calves? He has decorative fins or or costume uh, included fins, but they're not. Uh, it's not like Wolverine's claws, where where they're actually a, a biological thing okay. there. So again, maybe hey, you think he didn't need any help swimming? You think he wouldn't need uh, modifications to his outfit, to his gear, but hey, maybe it was uh, an energy efficiency maneuver, or maybe it was just for the look. Maybe, maybe he was a, a fashionista uh, of the undersea kingdom. He was. <laughs> so that, yep, there you have it. So hopefully I don't, do you know, I don't know when the other batch is going to come out. No, I, I'm shocked that this, you know, and again, I, I don't, there's many, many things I do not know. But I, I was just when when you let me know today that they were out, I was happily shocked and, and happily surprised. And this is great that they're coming out, as well as Migo continues to rely heavily on the horror characters, and and that does really well for them. Interesting juxtaposition to have hardcore for Migo, hardcore horror characters right next to the Super Friends <laughs> interpretation uh, of, of the 
more pure hearted hero. So that's uh go, go me, go, go me, go, go me, go keep doing it. All, all I can really say is that that Medusa is I'm 47. It's terrifying. In, I mean, I remember you had shown it in a previous episode and it was scary. It's, I'd seen it in person. I'm I'm sure there's a kid right now who's upset that he he walked that aisle at Walmart today. It's so it's so. I mean, do you remember the old uh, what Clash of the Titans? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, oh. that yeah, that was if I was ten or eleven at the time in the theater. That was legit scary to me and for me to see that interpretation of Medusa. And from having read the mythology in book format you know it was never described that that way i think ray harryhausen elevated the game to give a, a snake-like body and to depict the character that way so uh yeah in that movie at the time i didn't know it was coming and now this is a uh an excellent translation of those aspects of the character into into uh amigo into mm. amigo figure what a strange choice to to have that figure of i mean i just i don't know why they went with that one they were going for hammer horror characters so the, the british produced uh largely based on the american universal horror but then they started to branch out and so whatever i think they could not get the likeness rights for the actress who portrayed medusa so then they just went in a different direction and released uh released a figure that that you saw earlier today i was uh i was and i am looking forward to the horror house chicago shop uh getting medusa in stock i would like to pick it up from them that that'll be great uh but that's hey that's really cool that you were able to see it uh out by naperville today uh, I, hope I, I hope i never see it again <laughs> avert <laughs> avert your eyes right that's what is one supposed to do when they encounter medusa avert their eyes uh, <laughs> if we can dig farther back into, into the days gone by into the glory days Jim did you have a Mego toy store memory that you can that you can call forth uh, call forth for us um, I think I've mentioned this before but my uh, um, I wouldn't put it up there with this being as bad as seeing the Medusa in person but I definitely recall at one point on Saturday morning, they would often show a commercial for Batman and Robin, Mego. And one of the best selling, biggest selling points of it was that I feel like they, I, I can't really say it for sure, but I just remember they had those utility belts. I believe they had grappling hooks. Oh, yeah. And they had magnets in their gloves. And they would show the kids in the commercial attaching the Batman glove to the metal slide. We don't have metal slides anymore. But right at the park, right, right. The, the world has changed. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. Um, and I remember begging my mother to go to the toy store to get it. And we went there, found it quite easily. And it was too, my mom said, nope, it's too expensive. And I was like, we we just traveled all the way here. We, we like this, we caught what we're, we're, we're chasing. And I just, to this day, I'm like, like what i don't understand why she would do that um but my consolation prize was i remember it was like a dollar balloon a really large balloon and the end had a big rubber band or something and you would just kind of bounce it back and forth yeah. and i so every time i see a batman <laughs> like amigo i think of that memory and it's not well, a good memory <laughs> We've all had those those experiences as youngsters where the trip to the toy store didn't uh, pan out as we had hoped. Uh, I was sitting over here to recapture the uh, the Alex Ross uh, Superman, and I broke out the Superman geeky tiki, all, oh. all in tribute of our of our DC like characters. Uh, again, really exciting that Mego is going with the 50th anniversary release. Uh, really exciting that you would just. Be out in the wild as you often are, exploring and 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 making sure we, we you know breaking news is is ready to go when the news breaks. So much credit to you and many thanks to you for for landing that. Do you have any parting thoughts or questions or comments for us before we wrap up our our, our special episode here? I'm definitely interested to see who comes next. Um, 
I would love to see a Bizarro. I don't know mm -hmm. if Migo ever made a Bizarro. I'm I always love the the doppelganger. I love Bizarro and I love the Reverse Flash. Anything that has to do with a doppelganger, the evil or I don't know if it's a, technically a doppelganger, but the evil version. Right, the, the opposite number, if you will. I always think that's an interesting phrase, the opposite number, but the character that corresponds really uh, with a lot of opposite design to the hero. I think maybe Figures Toy Company had something going on with that, but I'm not sure. I, again, more research is, is merited. Uh, so that being said, thanks to everybody who is watching or has watched. Please do leave comments or questions in the comments section. This concludes our uh, breaking news 50th anniversary Amigo update. Again, thanks much to field correspondent and, and uh, field man. archaeologist, Mr. Campbell. Uh, man on the scene, man on the move. Uh. Man on the scene, man on the move. And so uh, that'll wrap us up for tonight. Thanks, everybody. And uh, catch you next time.